right. Good morning, everyone. We are on the record on case CR 22-211624, State of Idaho versus Lori Noreen Vallow. The state is continuing with presenting evidence in its case in chief. Court notes all the jurors are here properly seated and accounted for. I understand they've all signed their juror affirmation today. Is that correct, Mr. Bailiff? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you for that confirmation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, again, for your continued service and your continued compliance with the court's admonishment each evening when we break. The parties in the court appreciate it very much. At this time, then, uh, the state was conducting direct examination of Dr. Angie Christensen, who has returned to the stand today. I'll remind you, Dr. Christensen, you're still under oath for your testimony. With that in mind, Ms. Smith, if you'd like to continue with your direct examination, you may. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let me uh, return just briefly to item 16, if I may. Um, yesterday when we were, um, during your testimony, you mentioned that there were multiple um, sharp uh, deficits in item 16. Do you recall? Yes. And I could not remember whether we had identified those um, for the jurors. So if you could, please take a look at State's Exhibit 181C. And if you could, we, there should be a pointer up there. Um, I believe you had said there were five indications of sharp trauma in um, this part of the pelvis bone. Do I have that right? Correct, yes. Okay. Could you identify those for the jurors, please? So the one that I identified as number one is here. This one is alteration number two. Number three here is actually visible on both sides of this anominate. So the one indicated by three is the same alteration, which is visible from both sides. And the same for number four. This is number four from one side of the bone, which can also be observed on the other side. And alteration number five is here. Okay. Now, you said inanimate. Did I say that right? Inanimate. It's the yeah. same as the hip bone. Okay. Um, and so, um, and this is which side of the hip again? This is the left side. Okay. Um, and in identifying these various sharp um, items, you had indicated that s some of these appeared inconsistent with dismemberment. Did, do I remember that correctly? Yes, the, the general location of these sharp alterations in the pelvic region is inconsistent with, with what's typically seen in cases of dismemberment. Okay, in this particular bone? Well, in, in these particular locations on the bone. Okay, um, and so you did receive a lot of bones that were apart, correct? Yes, many of the bones I received were disarticulated or separated from one, on, one another and also fragmentary or okay. in multiple pieces. Okay, but this particular bone um, has some areas where some of the marks are inconsistent with dismemberment. Inconsistent with what's typically seen in cases of dismemberment, yes, that okay. I have observed or read about in case studies. Okay. The other bones that you examined, did you examine um, vertebra? Yes. Okay. And when you examined vertebra, did you see evidence um, that is consistent? Did you see any evidence of sharp um, trauma to the vertebra? I did not see any sharp alterations on the vertebrae. Okay. But my recollection is that many of the vertebrae were either thermally altered or fragmentary and damaged. So I can't exclude the possibility that sharp trauma was present and subsequently destroyed or not visible. Okay. And I believe a little later we'll see some pictures of that, but I wanted to kind of put that in context for us. Um, and so you saw lots of different bones, um, and you can't comment on what was on the bones that had extensive thermal damage. The ones that were thermally damaged are... And for the most part, highly fragmentary, and I didn't observe any sharp traumas on those bones. Okay. Doesn't mean they weren't there. It just means you didn't observe any. I, I can't say one way or the other. I can't exclude the possibility. But of the material that I did examine, I did not find sharp alterations on those other bones other than these three. Okay. And when you say these three, this is the first item we've talked about, item 16? Yes, the left and right anominate and the sacrum. Okay. And item 16 is the left? Correct.
Um, this remains item 16. It is dates exhibit 181E. Are these close-ups of those um, sharp trauma items you've discussed? Yes, these are close-up views of several of the same sharp alterations in the previous photographs. Okay. And um, in, in um, your report, I believe you used the word puncture. Is that correct? Um, I don't recall the exact language I used in my report. Um, okay. If you would like me to refer to my report, I can do that. Um, no, I, I think that's okay. I just want to make sure I understood. When you say sharp alterations, it is not your job to say what instrument caused those. That's correct, yes. Okay. Now, you indicated three items. Let's take a look at state's item uh, 19. It's 181F. Or your item 19. Do you recognize that? Yes. What's that? This is the right innominate or right hip bone annotated with arrows indicating sharp alterations. Okay. And how many sharp alterations were in the right hip bone? There were six on the right hip bone. Okay. Um, and um, could you identify those for the jurors just so it's clear? Sure. Five of the six are depicted in these photographs, number one being here, um, two not visible in either of these two views, um, three and four, and five, which again is visible from both views and so indicated on both images, and alteration number six. Okay. And um, now are these items consistent with other situations of dismemberment um, trauma, um, dismemberment trauma, or inconsistent? The, the location of these sharp alterations is not consistent with what I've previously observed in dismemberment cases. Okay. And if I could to orient us, let's take a look back at 182B. Um, just so that I understand what you mean, again, by hip bone, um, I put up uh, 182B. Could you take a look at us and um, show us again the, that right hip bone? This is the right hip bone. Okay. So um, sometimes I think of the hip bone sort of like, you know, when I'm carrying a baby, they're on my hip. So I think of it as that edge. Is that what you refer to as just the edge? Yes. So that edge that you're talking about is called the iliac crest, and it's the part of the hip bone at the top at top side of the hip bone. Okay. And so, but the entire hip bone extends down, correct? Yes. So the edge is what a lot of us think of is what you would call the iliac crest? Yes. All right. But then the entire surface extends down into the pelvis. All right. And so the items that you've identified and you pointed to it on States Exhibit 182B, um, that area of the pelvis is where again? Um, if you could show us. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? No problem. That area of the low, lower pubis area is where? That is located here. Okay. And in that area, did you see evidence of sharp trauma? Um, I believe we did. Um, discuss one sharp trauma on the left hip okay. bone yesterday. Okay. And so when you're saying hip bone, you mean that the entire bone that kind of curves like a C? Yes. The hip bone encompasses this entire portion here. Okay. Let, let's take a look at States Exhibit 181F, which is another view of your item 19, which again is that right hip bone. Is that right? Yes, but this, uh, I think this might be the same one that we just looked at. Oh, I apologize. Five of the six. Okay. And you've identified all of those, correct? Correct. All right. Did you also take the radiograph um, ex and the x rays of this one? Yes. Okay. Let me show you 181G. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Um, do you want me to zoom in if I can or no? I'm going to ask you to identify him on the radiograph. Okay, I think I can do that from this okay. view. Um, can you please identify the items you've discussed and identified in the, the larger picture? The sharp traumas? Yes, yes. ma'am. So sharp trauma number one, or what I've identified as number one, is here. Number two is here. Um, three and four. <coughs> 
five, again, visible in both views and labeled on both views, and number six. Okay. And number six is in a regular color photo, correct? Yes, number six is what's depicted in the photograph above. Okay. And those are all evidence of sharp trauma to that area? Yes. Um, and this area, and it, it may be just my view, so forgive me if I'm, I'm not oriented correctly, which area um, is sharp trauma number one in? Is it towards the top of the hip bone or towards the bottom of uh, sort of lower in the hip bone? Number one is in the pubic region. Okay. And number two would be where? Number two is in a region called the ischial region. It's basically, um, if you would like to show the, um, the photograph of the bone, it might be easier for me to point it out there. Do you want the diagram or the? Sure, the diagram. Sure. So the ischium is basically this part um, right back here. So it's, it's toward the, it's sort of the part of your hip that you're sitting on. Now you indicated there was a third bone. Is that documented in your items, the images of item six, 17, yes, where sir. we found the additional sharp trauma? I believe that was item 17. 17, thank you. Do you recognize that? Yes. What is that? These are photographs taken as part of my examination. Okay. Of what particular item? Uh, this is the... Can you move it down just a little bit? Oh, absolutely. So I'm sorry. It's hard for yep. me to tell what, nope, you, what is okay. visible. Um, this is I, the item 17 sacrum, which in these images here are still attached to several of the lumbar vertebrae. And um, did you identify any sharp trauma in this area? Yes, there was one sharp alteration on the left side, which is indicated here, annotated number one. And looking at the whole bone, that's approximately this location here. Okay. Um, and that is the sacrum? That's the sacrum, yes. Okay. Let me show you just for orient, um, to orient us again, is States Exhibit 182A. Where is the sacrum in relation to the pelvis that you've shown us? The sacrum makes up the back of the pelvis and the bottom of the spinal column. Okay. So is it that item that appears to kind of be in the between the two hip bones? Yes. Okay. And that area towards the bottom is where you saw evidence of sharp trauma. It's not toward the bottom, actually. It's oh, if you bring yeah, back sure. the diagram, I can. Sure. That sharp trauma on the sacrum was approximately here. And did that sharp trauma appear? Um, in any way sort of in line or near any other sharp trauma you saw? There were sharp traumas on the left hip bone that were in that general area. Okay. And let me show you um, an image um, which appears to be an x-ray of item 17, which is states 181i. Do you recognize that? Yes. Sorry, it's hard to orient. There we go. Um, and again, uh, this is what area of the body? This is the sacrum and four of the lumbar vertebrae. Okay. And in this view, in the x-ray view, could you see any evidence of sharp trauma? No. Okay. And so the images of the sacrum that we previously saw had some evidence of sharp trauma? Yes, it's just that it's not very easily visible in a radiograph like this. Okay. Thank you. One moment, please. Let me check with the team.
The state has nothing else, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Smith. Uh, who will be doing cross-examination? I will, Judge. All right, Mr. Thomas, you may conduct your cross. <clears throat> Good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Um, you talked a little bit about uh, how these uh, the injuries that were on this particular case were not consistent with what you would normally see in a dismemberment type case, right? That's correct. And I'm. Let's just let's just go there. How, how many dismemberment cases do you think that you've done over your career? A handful. A handful. More than ten. Probably fewer than ten. Fewer than ten. Okay. So what what makes? Uh, I guess I don't I don't understand what makes. What's a typical dismemberment type case? Well, in addition to my own case experience, I also am constantly reading the forensic literature and I've read a number of case studies and reports and research papers related to dismemberment cases. Um, typically, the purpose of dismemberment is to disarticulate the body into smaller portions, and that is usually accomplished by cutting around joints, which is not what I observed in this case. And what what kind of... Uh, so you... You're not the tool mark expert, right? That goes to somebody else. Correct. I think you said that earlier. Yes. Okay. And so your job is to decide which bones were were human and which ones were not human. Is that kind of what your job was on this particular case? So I, in this case, um, the material was all, everything that I observed was human in origin, and I was asked to identify any signs of potential trauma on the skeletal remains. In my laboratory, our procedure, if there are um, traumas that may have been um, imparted by a tool, that those are additionally and further examined by our firearms and tool marks unit. Okay. So everything that was sent to you, you knew were already human, human bones? They were identified to me as being human remains, but as part of my examination, I did determined that they were human in origin, or in some cases, some of the bones, <clears throat> excuse me, were so fragmentary that I wasn't able to conclude that they were definitively human. Okay. But your main job were, was to decide uh, sharp trauma versus other types of trauma on the bones? To I identify and differentiate any trauma to determine what its potential source was, and as a means of um, narrowing down which bones might be um, examined by other units. Okay. And so there was a lot of uh, questioning and direction towards uh, the hip area and the pelvic bone. Um, the top of the femur uh, comes up into a, a ball, right, where the, where the hip meets the femur? Correct, yes. Okay. And so some of the trauma was around the pelvic region in that particular area of the hip joint, right? Um, it was mostly on, m most of the sharp traumas were on what's called the ilium, which is that big blade-like part of the pelvic bone. Okay. But some of the trauma uh, was on the uh, near, near within inches of the uh, ball joint of the, the femur, right? Um, I would have to look at the images again, but I don't think any of them were directly on that socket or that joint area. Right. Not on that socket, but near that socket. I mean, none of it is very far from that socket, uh, depending because of the size of the bone. But yes, some of them were in that general neighborhood. I didn't measure the distance from the socket. Okay. So when someone is, look, uh, so when someone is trying to dismember a body, um, what is your understanding of, uh, in, in your past cases, what is your understanding of, uh, how that's done. Is it generally, I, let me withdraw that question. In this particular case, what types of instruments do you think were used based on your professional experience, based on your training, based on your 
uh, 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 research and, and your review of, of other articles, what types of instruments do you think were used on this particular case? This is not within the scope of my examinations. This is the toolmark examiners. Okay. So your, your job was just to define or just to say, yes, this was some sort of trauma, and that then you move it on to somebody else to, to decide which type of trauma? Yes. Okay. All right. And how long did you uh, review these bones? I mean, like, I guess I don't know how long it takes to, to take these bones, view them, um, do CT scans. How long was your particular uh, job here? I, I don't recall, but if you, if you look at my examination notes, each page is dated. So my examination started on the date of the first page of my examination notes and ended on the date of my um, final report. And do you have those examination notes with you? I, I, I provided them to the prosecution when I walked in today, but I don't have them in front of me. Okay, so if we got them in front of you, you'd be able to tell us? Yes. All right, let's do that. All right, Mr. Baird, <clears throat> if you please provide those to the witness. Thank you. So in this case, I began my examination on August 23 of 2020 and completed my final report on September 22, 2020. Okay. And was this the only case you worked on during the time between August 3rd and, uh, and September 20? I don't recall, but generally I'm only working one case at a time. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then further questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Does the state have any redirect? Very briefly, okay. Judge. Very well. Does the witness still have those case notes? Okay, let's have those returned, please. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, Doctor, just a quick question. Defense counsel asked you, you can't tell what type of implement, what actual instrument caused the traumas you observed, correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, however, you have used the phrase um, sharp trauma. Yes. Why do you, if you can't tell the specific tool, how do you determine it was actually caused by sharp trauma? So because sharp trauma refers to trauma that was um, imparted with an object with a very small surface area. And this can be differentiated from blunt trauma, which is trauma imparted by an object with a relatively large surface area. And projectile trauma, which is imparted by an object moving at a very high rate of speed with a, low, with a small surface area. Okay. And when you say small surface area, is that because of the size and shape of the trauma you saw inflicted on Tylee's bones? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have nothing further. 